All right, guys, what is up? It is Gnomes. I'm here in a game between Insane and Hermios. We have Insane here on the left-hand side. He'll be the one playing KF. It looks like Bechel. Um, I'll talk about that in a second. And then on the right-hand side, we have Hermios. Looks like he's playing FS um, Boghoppers. Now, you, the reason I say Bechel here, so even though I do see the Torton, the Torton Gale Slinger and the uh, Vicar, is two reasons. One, insane as a player i know him to be a um theme based player he doesn't really play meta like he i know him to play um certain races right like a race or a theme of some sort he doesn't really play meta and even though i see this gale slinger which would say hey it could be Tor uh, meta or it could be tortons because i only saw one champion which was a torton and one champion which was a uh, rachel but um, Gale Slinger is one of those meta champions that is just so insanely good, and I still, it, it hasn't been nerfed yet because I guess nobody's playing it enough. I don't know. It should be nerfed. Like if it, if this battle group was played enough, I'm pretty sure this uh, this champion should be nerfed quite a bit. But um, KF meta and whatnot is not being played enough, so he's not nerfed at least. But um, yeah, this is just a meta a meta include to put into any KF battle group to put it a good you know 0.5 tier up. So there are some ideas in Pox Nora where you know, you can make your whole battle group just become much, much stronger because all you do is add one champion because they just round out a battle group to where all the weaknesses are kind of removed or where they add such so much strength that they just they just go up. See here again, even though this might be bog hoppers, I guess it could be meta as well, seeing that we do have this uh, harbinger. But again, the Gale Slinger deployed here because this is slash uh, KF and FS, so you can play it in both battle groups. But yeah, so, you know, a good example of, you know, let me just play this champion and my battle group, which, which would by itself be maybe, let's say, tier 2, tier 2.5, 2 um, it all of a sudden is tier 1, you know, or all of a sudden tier 2.5 or uh, 1.5, something like that. So it definitely just adds a lot because, for example, when it comes to this champion, what it does is it adds a whole way to allow for um, initiation, right? Battle him gives you t 2 AP. So all your champions just have insane initiation. But if that's not enough, you also have Gale, which makes this champion... You could either use this on your own champions, because it, it's only it's only a knockback. It's actually not damage. So you can either... There's the... Um, there's the Battle Hymn, by the way. Oh, no, that was the Soothing Serenade, sorry. So you can either use this Gale to, you know, have your enemies be um, knockbacked into something or away from you, but you can also use Gale to move your own champions forward. So what you could do is say, hey, I want to have a champion right here moved two spaces forward. You can use Gale on right here, and he's moved then two spaces without damaging him. So very good. So it could be meta. But I mean, uh, so this is most likely meta then, I guess, because there, there's only two bog hoppers, and this bog hopper as well as this one could be played in um, a meta battle group, and maybe not so much in um, in a you know full faction. Bog hopper. So this might be meta, right? Because this is a very, very strong champion. Very hard to kill. And as we just saw, it got from the Mind Siphon, it just got its own version of Gale and Soothing Serenade. Alright, so there's the Battle Hymn, by the way. With 2 AP, the Harbinger. Ah, he's going to double tap here. He's going to double tap with this uh, Harbinger, I assume. Yeah, look at that. Boom, boom. And now, even though this Siphon can't attack, it could maybe think of moving this way. You know what's also insane? If this Gale Slinger use battle him, uses Battle Him, that would cause... Um... Ah, it's only when you're attacked. Okay, so it's only because he was attacked by the Gale Slinger did he get these two abilities. It's not when used nearby, like an adaptation or anything. It's not an adaptation. I just, just read it. So there's the stun. Yeah, Bog Hopper Elite, actually a pretty good meta champion, right? Look at these stats, actually. Very insane. So 70 Nora is very cheap, especially in FS. FS, you have to kind of think of, like, SP... Like, a, it's a version of SP, or I guess SP is a version of FS. Like, in my mind, they are. They're very similar because they both have... Um, uh, they both have faction bonuses that don't really buff their champions, but instead give them Nora gain, right? So here, in the, in the case of FS, you get six Nora turn, and in the case of SP, you know, you get Nora back. So here if you think of this as like an fs battle group you can really all you really want to do with fs then is just deploy play efficiently kind of like sp right deploy play efficiently um though the cool thing about fs is that you don't feel as bad for playing a spell because in sp if you play a spell or a relic 
or anything that's not a champion, you feel bad because you're not getting any value out of your faction bonus. But when it comes to FS, if you play a spell, you, you still got the six Nora at the beginning of your turn, right? So you still, you don't care, right? So that's what's kind of cool about FS anyway. And that's why um, FS meta is also so strong, right? SP meta, SP meta is very strong, but also FS meta because it's so smooth, right? It's so, um, it's just so, like, there's, how do you even explain this when I say so smooth? Very hard to explain. Um, it's so, like, um, how do you explain that? What I mean with that is that all you really got to do is play efficiently, deploy a lot, um, or I guess play efficiently, right? When it comes to FS meta, all you do is play efficiently, play some good champions. You have to maybe find a player or two, but generally just make sure you're deploying the right champions. Make sure you're always kind of moving forward, you're trading, and you're doing well. At least that's how SP meta works. Um, and in FS meta, I assume it's the same, right? Kind of just deploy, play rather efficiently, and your your value of your champ of your battle group should win just because meta is very very strong. Right? Meta is the best of the best. But then when it comes to, um, you know, you just beat out most, like, like all of your champions should be just slightly more efficient than they cost, right? Like, Bok Hopper Elite, 70 Nora for these stats, right? Two defense, 48 health means he's very tanky, you know, you have, you're very mobile, you can dodge things, you can stun things, you have good damage because you have multi-attack, so just, like, all your champs are just a tiny bit too efficient, and then if uh, your battle group is built on, on that, it's pretty good. All right, so what's happening here? He uses the uh, turtle on this Gale Slinger, so he's not in danger here. The Mirror Blade has a Nora Shield on it, so he's also not in too much danger because if he were to be attacked, um, a lot of Nora would go over to Hermione. Let's see if he does decide for it. He does have reflexes, so it's not even good to attack him. Like it's very, very hard to kill him. So I kind of, yeah, I doubt it exactly. He's just gonna run away. There's really no point in attacking this Mirror Blade. Because all that would cause is for Hermios to gain, or sorry, for um, Insane to gain a lot of Nora. So it's a very bit of a, or not very bit, it's a it's a, um, a bit of a standstill here in the middle. Because he can't really attack the Gale Slinger, can't really attack the Mirror Blade. We're going to have to see what happens next turn though. Because next turn there won't be this um, Nora Shield, the Gale Slinger will be out of the tor uh, Turtle. He could also start threatening top with this Harbinger, right? But we'll probably see a deploy top next turn, yeah. So, like, my assumption for next turn is a deploy from Insane on the top. He moves the Vicar bottom, moves the Cavalier into the font, and then retreats with these two. That's kind of the, the thought of my play. He, and then he could maybe seal if he wants. He could also leave the Mirror Blade here, or, like, attack into a Mirror Swap, and then and then use the to seal. Ah, there's the Book Burn, though. That's pretty cool. Initiative into Book Burn. That's actually very cool, isn't it? Because you can have him come out right away and then use his ability. Very strong. And then Soul Tap, obviously, always very strong. That's a pretty cool champion to have on your... Like, that's like a, a spell, basically, to just say, hey, next turn you're not playing anything. And this is actually, you know what he should be doing here? Insane. What Insane should be doing here is not getting into this font. In all honesty, his play here should almost always be to just fully run away. Like, if he wants to win the game... He fully runs away. If he wants to play extremely risky, like the only way in which he could maybe keep the font and not be in a losing position is if Hermios misplays. I think otherwise he's just losing. Because look, we have the... This is... It's a dispel too. So because this is a dispel as well, if he uses this seal on the mirror blade... We'll just see the Nexus move in, use the Invoke, so that the seal is gone, and then whatever champion is in this middle font will be dead. Like, I'm pretty sure, right? We have a lot of double cut taps here. We have a lot of AP gain with, like, Battle Hem, maybe. I don't know. Oh, okay. Moving over here with the Vashal, kind of weird. I mean, this is a support champion, not really what you want moving by itself, right? Distracting blows, heal champion, empathy. Yeah, I'm pretty sure anything in this font is dead. Unless he has, like, some kind of counter he can think of. <clears throat> Block is okay. Block could maybe survive. Like, and he's at 57 health and 2 defense. So maybe that's the play. Move him in. Retreat with him as well. And then just chill. And then hope you survive. He has to deploy top, right? Yeah, there's the Cavalier. 
But yeah, Vashel are also very strong. Vashel are pretty strong, right? They have a very cool um, passive as well with the seal. Kind of a cool idea on how you have to play against it and with it. Like you need dispel. Oh wow, he's actually staying out of the font. That's exactly what I said too. I said he has, he has to either stay out of the font or he has to have some kind of idea on how to not die here. He's very playing very well. I didn't know Insane was so good at this game. Huh. Like I knew he was okay, but he's actually playing very well, I think, in my opinion. All right, so we could just see him actually move up and attack. Instead of moving into the font, he just move up three, double tap. He's in range for a double tap. Could move back one more if he was here. But yeah, he could just move here. Like here is completely safe, right? All right, so he's moving. Ah, there's the poison quail. So he has a relic, that's pretty smart, right? So kills the relic now. And this would then mean that next turn insane gets in the font. I thought he was gonna just retreat off the font, font fully. Ooh, okay, so now we see the invigorate. I don't know why. Ah, for the Cast Hungry Mire, I assume, right? Yeah, Cast Hungry Mire. Though it won't work on this Unstoppable Champion, right? Because you, you can't be rooted. And he has Mirror Blade, possibly? I don't know. Yeah, okay, just doesn't. He is Unstoppable, right? He can just walk through here if he wants. But this will probably. This will most likely give him the font, right? This is not really. I mean, he has Gale, though, again, right? Three turns. So he could Gale the Nexus and. And this Siphon, he actually get a really nice Gale here to hit both of these. Yeah, if he puts it right here, it actually hits both of them into the... All right, there's the attack. Actually moves down this way with the Harbinger. Nice play. Very cool idea of Hermios, right? What Hermios did here, I didn't even think about this. It's very smart. He's saying, hey, I'm going to just move my Harbinger down here. I don't even have to deploy now. And this Vicar is again in danger, right? Vicar is never winning the 1v1. Um, so now the Vicar again has to run away. And he, he forced a Vashal, he forced the deploy here, right? So now Hermios forced the deploy top, so there's no deploy here. So it's four versus five, forced to deploy here, and he's still in danger. And he's saying, you know what, I'm just gonna have this Harbinger move, you know, jump back and forth, and you're just not having a good time. Like, what's he gonna do here? Run away? Like, again, he, ah, okay, he did back off here. He had a bad positioning, but he, he saw the Gale possibility, so he moved back. This is interesting. He just moved back and forth and then heal. Yeah, look, he's gonna get. He's taking no. He's taking damage here. He's taking. He's getting ten Nora. He just got ten Nora off of that because of the uh, seal. He can get in the font. There's no healing here though. Zero healing. Ah, plays one here too. But he can't get in the font with him, right? Because the cavalier will not become rooted from this terrain or, or from the hungry mire, but the mirror blade would get. Um, rooted so it can't really move forward and I don't think you can even like gale yourself over like what I was saying before like move him over here and then gale himself over I don't think that works ah okay he just gave him all there you go and he's taking loads <laughs> I mean he's he's taking a lot of damage but he's getting a lot of Nora that's kind of cool that's a cool play does he have the kill no he never has the kill though because this champion has one with Nora and this is physical physical magical I guess here <laughs> I mean, he's getting shitloads of Nora. That's pretty fun. I mean, if he has like a heal mass, all right, all right, all right, all right. Let's see what happens. I mean, he has thirty-two seconds. He has to be kind of quick. And like I said, he doesn't. Okay, plays a Thorn. That's twelve. That's whoa. <laughs> he got all that Nora. He got so much Nora from the um, twenty seconds left from the uh, this terrain here. Is he dead? Fourteen, ten. You can only attack once. So he's barely alive. He can attack once. And Top can run away. Top has to just run away. He doesn't have enough time to do anything else. He has to move, 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 move. There you go. That's a pretty cool play. I mean, he put himself into Mindcaller attack range, though. And he's not dead. So he wasn't able to kill this Nexus. But he puts all three of these champions have the Nora shield up. And he did so much AoE damage, right? With a double thorn collection. That was pretty fun. Not gonna lie. Pretty fun. Oh, but he just uses Invoke, or he already did? Yeah, he already did, because it went off cool. Yeah, yeah. He actually doesn't have it. Whoa. All right, Gale Force? Won't work, because of Unstoppable, right? Gale Force won't work, or the Gale, I mean. Oh, he does have it up. Okay, well, there, then there's GG. I thought he was a... Because it automatically triggers, but then he just used it again somehow. Whatever. <laughs> I don't know what happened. Either way, GG.